Hello friends. Today in this session we will discuss design of interchanges on urban expressways. And major part of this session is taken from IRC 92 2017 that is guidelines for the design of interchanges in urban areas. An interchange is a grid separated intersection where one road passes over another with ramps to connect them. And this is different from a grid separated intersection. and this i have discussed in detail in another session of types of interchanges in brief there are seven basic shapes of interchanges diamond six ramps rotary clover leaf eight ramps trumpet stack and volleyball and all these i have discussed in my earlier session you can watch that video for complete understanding of these interchanges for example in case of diamond it is a two level structure in case of six ramp it is half clover leaf where you provide two loops and four outer connections rotary can be either a two level three level or even four level also the clover leaf is the most commonly used interchange where you have four loops and four outer connections trumpet is provided at a t junction or a y junction stack is provided it's a multi level structure where the movements are separated vertically at the same point at the center of the intersection and volleyball is a variant from stack we provide three level structure and turning movements are at the same level in design of interchanges few basic principles are to be followed and these are the planning consideration geometric design consideration traffic consideration interchange selection parameter safety consideration for non motorized traffic and multimodal consideration in planning consideration there are five parameters that should be considered while selecting a particular type of interchange the first is land availability the land availability is extremely important in case of urban areas and the approximate land requirement for different types of interchanges as suggested irc 92 is given here for trumpet interchange you require 44000 square meter diamond interchange requires a minimum area but multi level rotary requires the largest area that is 180000 meter square the second is spacing between interchanges it is important consideration in planning and design of interchange and this spacing can be measured either from cross road to cross road but in some countries this distance is measured from nose of the ramp of one interchange to the nose of the ramp of the second interchange closure spacing may require the use of collector distributor roads to remove the merging diverging and accelerating accelerating traffic from the expressway the distance between two interchanges as taken in different countries is like this in usa it is measured from cross road to cross road that is 1.6 km for urban area and 3.2 km for rural areas in uk it is measured from nose to nose and it is 3.75 into v where v is the speed in km per hour in germany it is nose to nose in france it is nose to nose and in australia it is measured from cross road to cross road and these are the distances suggested in different countries in irc 92 a minimum spacing of 1.6 km is suggested between interchanges to allow sufficient space for entrance and exit maneuver in case of rural area this can be up to 4.8 km the third is access control access control is established to preserve the safety and efficiency of a specific road having connection with the expressway and the number of access points is determined by functional classification of interchange characteristics of the traffic current and future land use environment and aesthetics highway design and operations and economic considerations all these factors are considered while deciding the number of access control points then warrants the decision to provide an interchange should be based on careful consideration of a number of factors and all these factors are called warrants the first is safety 
that is crash reduction benefit of an interchange may warrant provision of interchange on at grade intersection the design in design consideration the main concern is providing continuous flow on the expressway therefore intersecting roads will be either terminated or connected to expressway through a grade separation or will be rerouted sometimes topography of the area is such that grade separated intersection is more suitable than at grade intersections very poor level of service on an at grade intersection may also warrant provision of interchange to reduce the congestion expressways are best choice to handle high volume of traffic and therefore they are also and therefore traffic volume is also a important consideration and the last is road users benefit interchange may be warranted if the analysis shows that road user benefits will exceed the cost over the service life of the interchange and interchange is justified when total traffic of all arms of an intersection exceeds 10000 psu per hour or when there is a high rate of fatal accidents at an intersection in spite of all possible traffic control measures the next is traffic consideration the traffic data collection and projection of traffic volume are basic requirement for planning of interchange the survey that should be carried out are road inventory survey classified traffic volume survey turning movement count survey vehicle occupancy survey road side od survey vehicle speed and delay survey and intersection volume delay survey this matrix is provided in the irc 92 to assess the feasibility of complete interchange along a rural corridor it is not recommended when crossing of mdr with mdr is encountered but it is highly recommended when a national highway crosses another national highway or another expressway it is also recommended when two expressways cross each other similarly in the case of urban corridor when you have road typology like collector sub arterial arterial and expressways so based on this matrix you can decide where do you provide interchange and where you can recommend a great separated or at grade intersection another feature is ramp ramps or pattern of various turning roadways determine the geometric configuration of the interchange ramps can broadly be classified into four basic shapes left turning roadway referred to as diagonal ramp or outer connection this side or from this side a loop a loop is a ramp which turns to 70 degree to accommodate right turning traffic a semi direct connection is a ramp for right turning through a partial deviation from the intended path whereas a direct connection is also used for right turning but as a natural maneuver with very little extra travel distance the design speed for ramp should be related to the design speed of the major intersecting highway and irc 92 suggest the ramp design speed for different design values of major highway design speed for 80 km per hour or 100 km per hour this 80 km per hour generally adopted in urban expressway and this is in rural expressways and these are minimum and desirable speed for the design of ramps now horizontal curvature of ramp should preferably be of circular curve with transitions on each end if that is not possible then two centered compound curve may also be provided the minimum radius of the ramp as suggested by irc 92 is given in this table for different design values of major highways and similarly radius of curvature for loop is 30 to 60 meter depending upon the space available the stopping side distance or side distance value are for a safe stopping distance and should be provided with both in horizontal and vertical direction and these are the values minimum and desirable for different design speeds for ramp and for loops it is the ssd 
is measured between two points, one at a height of 1.2 meter above the road level and the other 0.15 meter above the road level. But on vertical curves, the height of the object can be taken zero, that is the road surface, and this distance xm is x meter rather is measured as a distance traveled in 10 seconds. This is the elevation of exit taper. And similarly, if you see the plan, it will be like this. Then this distance x is measured in meter that is equal to the distance traveled in 10 seconds. In the case of side distance on auxiliary lane, here x is the distance which is traveled in 7 seconds of travel time. But these are the minimum distances and as far as possible, the actual distance should be larger than these distances. Ramp profile usually consists of a section of tangent grade between two vertical curves. The tangent grades on ramp should be as flat as possible and desirably it should be limited to a maximum of 4% and in no case it should exceed 6%. The vertical curves at either end of the ramp should be designed to provide for at least the safe stopping side distance corresponding to the design speed of the ramp. And IRC 92 provides some guidelines for safe SSD as well as length of the vertical curve for summit curve and valley curve and these are the absolute minimum value of vertical curve depending upon the design speed. Now here in this table A is the algebraic difference in grades as expressed in percentage. A ramp may be either for one-way movement or for two-way operations. For the two-way operation, divided type of cross-section is provided with a minimum median width of 1.2 meter. The width of shoulder should be at least 2 meter and out of it, at least 1 meter should be paved. The shoulder should be properly delineated by means of pavement markings and road width depends upon the design hourly volume. IRC 92 provides base capacity values for urban road sections with different category of road width. For example, for two lane undivided carriageway, it is 1200 PCU per hour per lane. And for four lane divided, it is 1350 PCU per hour per lane. Similarly, the capacity values are given for six lane and eight lane divided carriageway also. Ramp terminal means the intersection of the exit ramp and the crossroad or intersection of entrance ramp and the expressway and therefore there are two types of ramp terminals one is exit terminal another is entrance terminal in the case of exit terminal it can be either a parallel type exit or it can be a taper type exit but in both cases these points a b c are important now in the case of exit terminal this is a point a and here the lane width is increased to the width of the ramp W2 just to permit the vehicles which have left the expressway to accelerate and go to the crossroad. B is the nose area and it should be paved and marked in this manner and at C the through lane should be tapered for a distance of 20 meter. Same is the case with the entrance terminal also. Entrance terminal should be provided for sufficient length of acceleration lane to enable a driver to increase the speed from that of the turning ramp roadway to the speed on expressway. Now in the case of entrance terminal, this at this point A, the funnel entrance is provided by reducing the width of the ramp W2 to the width of the lane W1. B is the same point as in case of exit terminal and C is also similar point. The length of acceleration and deceleration lane depends upon the speed difference between the ramp and the main highway and IRC 92 provides some guidelines for the length of the taper for different acceleration lane and deceleration lane and it says that desirable length is 250 meter with a minimum of 180 meter and in case of deceleration lane it can be 120 to 90 meter. The next is lateral and vertical clearance. The minimum lateral clearance that is the distance between the extreme edge of the carriageway and the face of the nearest support should be equal to the normal shoulder width. And similarly the vertical clearance at underpass 
should be minimum of 5.5 meter after making allowance for any future raising or strengthening of the underpass roadway. The super elevation and it is desirable to provide as much super elevation as practicable on ramps, particularly when the curve is sharp on downgrade. But the maximum super elevation is limited to 7% as in case of a normal highway and it is desired that the maximum value of super elevation be capped 6% only. Integration of bicycles with other modes of transport is the key to sustainable transportation system and the common safety issues for an NMT network are insufficient lighting, lengthy crossing distances, unmarked crossings, poor side distance and insufficient space. The factors of safety considerations in an interchange are sight lines and therefore adequate sight should be provided and that can reduce the conflict vertical separation from shared road use area, horizontal separation that is dedicated lane for bikes and collision control and priority traffic. Now crossing are the most likely place for car bicycle collision and therefore should be designed carefully. Driveway should have adequate sight lines at exit ramp as well as entrance ramp and they should be provided with proper signs and road markings. Another important consideration for safety of an empty is the horizontal and vertical separation from traffic lanes. Dedicated lane can reduce the safety concerns of bicycle riders. And similarly, the vertical separation between the car lane and the bike lane of minimum of 10 cm should be provided for safety reasons. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. These are the provisions as given in IRC 92-2017. You can give your feedback in the comment box.